Hi, I'm Dinelle and this is MyChristianFilms.org. We are here in Orlando, Florida at the Amway Arena for the Revolve Tour, an audience full of teenage girls from the ages of 13 to 18 who are being ministered to by multiple groups, one of which is Group One Crew. We're gonna catch up with them inside backstage and just get to know them a little bit better, find out who they are and what they're up to. So come on, let's go inside. Hey, what's up, I'm Manuel. I'm Blanca. I'm Pablo. And we're Group One Crew, and we just want to welcome you to MyChristianFilms.org. So thank you so much for being with us. I'm Dinell, and um, you guys had your concert last night. You guys have been on tour with the Revolve Tour for how long now? It's our second year. So. It's your second yeah. year. And how did you get together? As a group? As a group. Well. What happened was, is that we went on um, a website called Match.com. Match.com. E-Harmony. E-Harmony. No, okay, just kidding. <laughs> no, you <laughs> didn't. Bro. <laughs> and he was trying to holla, and then I was like... I was like, holla. <laughs> yeah. Okay, for real. So we met back, we're all from the same town mm -hmm. in Orlando, and we live like two minutes away from each other. So it happened we were all intertwined in one way. I was best friends with his younger brother. He had a studio and was recording Manuel. I walk into the house one day and they meet a girl singer by chance. And so he went to my high school and was like, you sing, right? Why don't you try to do it? And um, it ended up from that day, we just gelled and started making music together. And then Manuel and another friend of ours created kind of like a Bible study slash musician movement for Orlando type thing where we had 13 people come meet once a week and work on music and be accountable to each other and just help one another get build you know to build up and the name of the Bible study was group one group one so that's where we got our name from and continued doing that that was about seven years ago Wow so you guys have been together for seven years. Yeah. Wow. Now, how did, how did, aside from getting together at the beginning of you creating, how did each of you, just real quick, get into music? Um, I mean, I, I, always, I always had friends that were like musicians, so I was always around music, but I always kind of took it for granted. I had a, a, a musically inclined ear, but I just really just never paid attention to it. So I used to write a lot, like just poetry and spoken word and whatnot. And then that kind of just developed into lyrics, and then lyrics developed into just rapping, and then just teaming up with the right people, and then I started kind of doing it more often at local lounges and stuff like that. So that's kind of how it happened. I've been seeing since I was a little girl. Since I was like five years old, I would host my own talent show at my house for family members. And so I've been doing it since I was really young. I think I took it more serious around 14 years old. I started doing stuff for Disney and like, trying to put myself out there with, you know, different record labels and things like that. And then met these guys when I was 17, so. Nine love? I've been doing it since I was a little girl, and I was... <laughs> <laughs> I did it, like, I started, I started dancing before rapping, and dance got me into music. And uh, rap started in 94, when I was uh, getting into high school. And so it was always music for me, you know, I just... I just discovered rap in 94. Just one day, I was, me and my friends were like, let's just start a rap group. And we just started writing our first song, like right there, like literally it happened like that. So. Was it good? The song? The rap? No, it was horrible. <laughs> I remember it to this day. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Can you give us a few? I was like, I'm the third brother in line. I bust the funky rhyme. I got the girl saying, we love you long time. Black, right? Well, you know what? Humble beginnings obviously bring us to <laughs> greater places. Um, I, I was reading, it's not that whack. I was reading about you guys and each of you, in your own pursuit of doing this, ran into, you know, a hurdle, a little bit of a hurdle. You were working somewhere at the time um, when you decided to actually take this seriously. Where were you working? Well, I was working at, um, at Walmart. That was my first job being a cashier there. Um, I think I didn't take, um, I wouldn't say I didn't take music seriously, but I took my my my, my walk with God seriously when I had, um, I was in a car accident. 
and then right at the car accident, like at, like at impact, my car got split in two. So therefore, I couldn't go, um, I couldn't go to work anymore. So therefore, I devoted myself to just making more music at home and just spending my time with God and whatnot. And just the whole fact that I walked away from that type of accident, you know, just made me kind of realize that okay, there's something more that God is keeping me here on earth for, you know. So um, and that kind of just created just a ripple effect throughout my life and to where it's kind of brought me to where I'm here now. You know? Blanca, how about you? I think for me, musically, like I told you before, when I was 14 years old, um, started trying out and putting myself out there. And I had a lot of failures, you know. I tried out for American Idol a few times and didn't make it and was trying out for Disney. And then I had a record label at the time that was interested and just things flopped and didn't go through. And so I was very jaded, I guess, in a sense, by the music industry and, and just myself, very insecure of like, what I was called to do, what I feel that I want to do, but now I'm just feeling like I'm not good enough to do it. Mm. And then um, I ended up getting saved at 17, and God just placed these amazing people in my life and started building me and my confidence up and building my skills up and gave me a purpose to why I sing, and I made it here. So, Manuel, how about you? When music became serious to me, I, I think it was... It was, it was serious from the first day that I decided to do it. Even though back then I did it for all the wrong reasons, it was still serious, like, I knew that it was what I was gonna do with life. And when I got saved in my senior year in high school, I put the mic down for a year, just to get in the word and get real versed on what I was about to come out with, what I was about to share with the world. I didn't wanna be ignorant of a lot of things, so I just put it down for a year and just got into the word hardcore and um, picked it back up. I didn't actually pick it back up. It, things were handed to me after that. And I just kept walking through the doors that were open, man. I, with me, I take everything I do serious. I'm, I'm kind of overbearing when it comes to that stuff, so it doesn't take, it doesn't take much for me to be like, this is serious. This right here is serious. So everything I do, I feel like it's, I try to see things on the, the final level. So awesome. that's how I act. That's awesome. I know that <clears throat> your self-titled album, album came out in 2007 and the song that really launched you guys out there that I was familiar with was Love is a Beautiful Thing. It was all over the radio and that's where I first was introduced to you at a concert that I got to go to and see you perform. Totally amazed. Since that time until now, you guys um, have reached the success of being nominated for three Dove Awards this year. You've won consecutively two years in a row for rap hip-hop album of the year and you had something really interesting to say in regards to your thoughts on your group's success, on the success that your group has experienced. Regardless of all of the nominations and the acknowledgments and the acclaims and all this stuff that, that come with what you guys are doing, what is your feelings on, on the success that you've accomplished and, and how God has brought you to this place? I mean. Success is, is a funny word because it's dictated by your perception of, of, of what's surrounding that word. Like if you're coming from a worldly perspective, you're thinking how much money do you have, how much, how much property do you own, how many CDs have you sold. Um, but with us, man, like there's nothing like waking up in the morning and knowing that you're fulfilling the purpose of what you've been called to do. So when we, when we look at our career, when we look at our life, we have goals that we want to accomplish, but none of them are dictated by what the world would consider successful. I mean, we hope to have all those things, but we understand that at the end of the day, man, if we're inspiring people and if we're, if we're waking up to our purpose, then success is exactly what we need to accomplish. And that's, that's it. Because at the end of the day, God's not going to ask you how many CDs you sold. He's not going to ask you how many stadiums you played. None of that's going to be important. He's going to ask you, did you accomplish what I, what I set out for you to accomplish? And with that, all these things may come. We hope they do. If they don't, then they don't. You know, but um, we're just proud of the fact that we're still here and that we still have shows. Yeah. And a lot of shows, by that way. Um, <clears throat> Ordinary Dreamers is your latest album. Summarize the mix. Um, of rounds that listeners will find because I listened to little samples and every single song is 
you know, attention catching, your lyrics are there, but you've also got different sounds going on throughout the whole album. Who writes? Who, who, you know, is it a collaboration of all of you? And where does, where does these miracle, you know, songs come from, these mixes that you guys have?